All right, so now let's move on to the keyword research page of Key Search, which is where you'll probably spend the bulk of your time. It's also what you'll see when you first log into the tool. And this is where you're going to type the keywords that you think you might use for a post, and you'll do the actual research to find out what the volume is, which means how many people are searching for that keyword, and how hard it's going to be to rank for them. So in this case, let's say I want to do a post on a cheeseburger soup recipe. So I've typed cheeseburger soup here, I've clicked search, and this is the page that it brings up. I just want to walk you through what you'll see here. So you've got the term you typed in along with a potential competition score. In this case, it says competition is moderate. The score is 48. If you remember, when you typed your website into the Explorer function, it gives you a baseline competition score to try to aim below. So in my case, it told me to aim below 40. Um, once you start playing around with it, you get to you kind of get to know whether that's accurate or not. I generally will try to aim below 35. Um, but in this case, it's telling me the competition score is 48. So if I know that my website should be at 40 or below, that's probably not going to be a good keyword for me to try to rank for because it's unlikely that I'll be able to beat out the top 10 results on Google. Um, over here, you'll see the total number of results for something. So in this case, there's, you know, 8 million cheeseburger soup results on the internet. You'll see the current search volume, so about 33,000 people a month are looking for this term. And then you'll see some advertising metrics, which unless you're getting into CPC advertising, you can just kind of ignore those. Down below, you'll see search trends. So in this case, it looks like the searches go up in November, December, January. They dip down in the summer. That kind of makes sense, right? Because people are looking for soup recipes in the winter, not as much in the summer. On the flip side, if we looked for something like a watermelon recipe, it would likely show the opposite distribution where we'd see more in the summer, less in the winter. Down here, you're going to see what the current top 10 results in Google look like. So you have the URLs here, and you can actually click on these and you know go look at them so you can get an idea of what the content's like in those top 10 posts. It gives you a page authority and a domain authority. There's some controversy in the SEO world about you know, whether those things definitely matter or not. But I can tell you, at least from my experience, if I see a ton of red here, and a ton of, you know, orangish brown <laughs> um, here as well, it's going to be pretty difficult to outrank those posts. So that's something in addition to this score here, I'm always going to want to look at these top 10 results here and see what they look like. Now over on this side, this is really kind of your bread and butter of this tool. You've got your initial term that you searched for. So we see that cheeseburger soup with the volume. We find the volume both here and over here. We see the competition score that we saw here. But then we're also going to see all of these other keywords that Key Search thinks are related to your initial search. And what you can do from there is you can really just start to think about, okay, what other terms that are listed here might fit my recipe? Is it an easy cheeseburger soup? Is it a crock pot cheeseburger soup? And then you can start to look at the search volume and the competition scores. And essentially, you're just trying to find the gems that have a pretty decent search volume and a pretty low competition score. Um, as far as the search volume to choose for, that's going to depend on your own website and um, you know how niche of a topic that you have. I generally will try to look for things that have a minimum of about you know three to five hundred. But if there is a term that's a little bit lower that is really easy to rank for, I might decide to write a post on it anyway. Um, that's my personal you know kind of criteria that I use, but you might have different criteria that you use depending on your site. A really established site that's going to be able to rank for some of the more high competition things, um, they'll be able to you know, pick some higher volume keywords. So what I might do here, going on that criteria, 
I'm gonna click that filter button, and that's going to let me filter by certain keywords or by volume um, or multiple things. So in this case, let's say I wanna look for a keyword, a, you know, to use for this post that has at least 300 searches a month. I'm gonna click filter, and you can see that it brought our total keywords here from 500 and change to 174. So now all the results that are left here have at least 300 searches a month. From there, I would just go through here and start looking for the ones that might fit. So in this case, I know that my cheeseburger soup recipe is a crock pot cheeseburger soup. And so sometimes the competition scores will automatically populate. I always recommend clicking on it again because sometimes it's like an old score and rankings have changed. So even if you see it here already, click on that again and it's going to bring up those search trends as well as those top 10 results here. And so if I'm looking quickly at this, I see, okay, there's a couple of greens here, all right, which means that the page authority is a little bit lower. So yeah, maybe that's something that I might be able to rank for. I'm gonna keep that one in mind because the search volume is 2,900, that's pretty high, and the score is only a 32. And then I would just keep going through here and look at the other ones that might be relevant and just try to find the best one. So maybe I would look at Easy Cheeseburger Soup here, and I would say, oh no, that doesn't look good. Lots of reds, you know, lots of browns. It's a 42, that's a higher score. Maybe I would look at slow cooker. So that's another thing to think about. People use different terms, so crock pot versus slow cooker. Um, in this case, I can see that I think I was better off with crock pot because it's a higher volume and a lower competition score compared to the slow cooker one. Maybe I would look at cheeseburger chowder. That's like another, you know, recipe name. Maybe my recipe would fit that. I could check that and see what I come across. Um, so this is a good example where the, you know, the competition score says 37, but if I look at these top 10 results here, the domain authority for all of these is still pretty high. So I would skip over this. The reason that it says 37 is because of all of the rest of this information, which would be, you know, backlinks, it would be, does the title contain the keyword, does the URL contain the keyword, all of those kind of extra aspects of SEO. Um, but for me personally, I haven't found good luck with trying to rank for things when there's this much authority uh, on the first 10 spots. So I won't go through you know, every single one of these here, but that's how I would really work through this process and try to find the keyword that I would use for the post. And so if we just looked at what we had so far, I would end up going for this crock pot cheeseburger soup with a volume of 2,900, a competition score of 32, and then I would make sure to write my post uh, surrounding that main keyword. One of the other things I wanna point out is this bulk check right here. If you click that button, what it does is it checks every single competition score in your list of keywords. And I know that sounds like a good thing, like it would save a lot of time. Um, the problem is that in Key Search, because it is a lower cost tool, you do get a limit on how many searches you can do per day. So with this, what you type in up here, okay, you get 20 a day on the starter plan or 50 a day on the pro plan. With these, so each of these that you click to check like this, um, on the starter plan, you get 200, and on the pro plan, you get 500. So the problem with using that bulk check is if you're in here and you have, you know, 174 keywords in your list here, and you click that bulk check, you're going to use up 174 of your 200 searches that you get. So I tend to be a little bit uh, more cautious and just kind of go through and click the ones that I think sound good for what I have in mind or what I think might make a good post idea. Um, certainly if you filter this list down more, so in this case maybe I've got my 300 for volume and I definitely want cheeseburger in the title for some reason. Um, maybe I filter that down a little bit more so now I have 42 here, then maybe that would be an option to use that bulk check if you really want to speed things up and just kind of look through those as quickly as possible. And then you can click 
on either the volume or the score here to um, organize it. So if I click here, it's going to give me the highest volume ones first. If I click here, it's going to give me the competition scores in order. So if I had already looked at all of these competition scores using that bulk check, I could sort it here to find the lowest competition score first. Um, again, I just tend to kind of go through and pick the ones that I think are relevant, but if you're in a time crunch and you don't mind, you know, using up some of your searches in bulk, then you could try that, that bulk check um, once you've filtered everything down. So that's pretty much it as far as doing keyword research within Key Search. You're putting your keywords in, you're getting a list of the related keywords, you're looking at both the search volume as well as the competition score here. When you find things that you think might be good as far as the volume and score, you want to make sure you look at these top 10 Google results and see, okay, am I seeing something that I might be able to rank for. Uh, in this case with that crock pot cheeseburger soup, I'm seeing a few sites here that I think I might be able to outrank. I would go to these, I would take a look at them, see how I could make my post better, and then that's how I would start to craft my post.